The year is 1995. The 104th Congress convenes, the first controlled by Republicans in both houses since 1953. The Dow Jones closes over 5,000 for the first time ever. The Million Man March is held in Washington, D.C. In a Los Angeles courtroom, O.J. Simpson tries on a pair of gloves and is found not guilty. In Oklahoma City, 168 are killed and over 800 injured in the bombing of the Murrah Federal Building, the deadliest act of domestic terrorism in U.S. history. And nearing the end of his first term, President Clinton is enjoying a national approval rating of over 60%. One year earlier, the Internet and its World Wide Web came to mass public attention via the introduct of the Mosaic Browser. Within a few months, Microsoft would license the software for $2 million and rename it Internet Explorer. In August, Microsoft would release Windows 95, a revolutionary new consumer-oriented operating system that includes such unprecedented features as a start button and a taskbar. The system's now iconic startup sound is composed by Brian Eno. Music videos for Weezer and Edie Brickell are included on the installation's CD-ROM. Windows 95 is launched with a $300 million advertising campaign that features the Rolling Stones' Start Me Up. Soon a frenzy of excitement over the business and cultural potential for this new technology sweeps the nation. It triggers a golden era of dizzying IPOs, overnight millionaires, and extravagant corporate spending. It is 1995, and this new entrepreneurial economy, later to be called the dot-com bubble, has officially begun. The prevalent music format remains CD, but because so many late model cars still have cassette players, a fairly significant percentage of country and hip hop releases are still sold on magnetic cassettes. Walmart still carries the format, but will soon stop doing so. The big five record labels have embraced the vast possibilities of new digital technology by creating the enhanced CD as the ultimate in adding value consumer incentive. Most labels have also launched websites, which mainly gather addresses for mailing lists. The ultimate portable music device is the Sony Discman. Nevertheless, Sony continues to promote its mini-disc, which had been introduced two years earlier as, quote, the ideal portable digital format that marks an important step in the evolution of new music media. In a world of video games, consumers are introduced to the new Sega Saturn, Nintendo's 32-bit portable Virtual Boy, and Sony's first PlayStation, which uses discs rather than the standard cartridges. Sales of all three consoles are hampered by a lack of available software. On the radio, this year's top hits include Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something, Kiss from a Rose by Seal, This is How We Do It by Montel Jordan, Wonderwall by Oasis, and Waterfalls by TLC. Alanis Morissette's American debut album, Jagged Little Pill, sells over 20 million copies. Michael Jackson's History debuts at number one and moves 390,000 units for the best first week sales of the year. Radiohead's second album, The Benz, debuts on the Billboard album chart at number 88. With the release of Me Against the World, Tupac Shakur becomes the first male solo artist to have a number one debut album while still in prison. Later this year, Suge Knight will post his $1.4 million bail in exchange for a three-album deal with Death Row Records. At the 1995 Grammy Awards, Tony Bennett will win Album of the Year for MTV Unplugged. Bruce Springsteen wins Song of the Year for Streets of Philadelphia, and Sheryl Crow is named the Best New Artist. The playlist of recently rebranded VH1 includes heavy rotation of clips by Whitney Houston, Elton John, Celine Dion, and Ace of Bass. And though Beavis and Butthead is in its second season as the most popular original program on MTV, the vast majority of the channel's programming is still music videos. In 1995, a 16-year-old pop singer from Sweden named Robin Carlson signs a recording contract with RCA Records. Though her initial singles are hits overseas only, RCA will patiently nurture and develop the young artist until her American breakthrough nearly two years later. In 1999, she records the album My Truth, which boasts a startling new musical maturity and quickly becomes a European smash. 
but fearing these new songs work against the teen pop image they'd painstakingly created, RCA will refuse to release the album in America. Rising Tejano superstar Selena is shot and killed by her former fan club president. Shannon Hoon of Blind Melon is found dead on his tour bus of a cocaine overdose. The hip-hop community is shocked when Easy e succumbs to AIDS. In August, Jerry Garcia dies of a heart attack while at a drug rehab facility. The Grateful Dead disbands. In the mid-70s, the Dead had started their own record label, began their own ticket sales operation, controlled their own merchandising, and created a global database of devoted fans. And despite the fact the vast majority of the band's music is distributed for free via the rudimentary P2P process of cassette tapes, and will later allow free MP3s, the Grateful Dead will still earn over $60 million annually for the band, their record companies, and outside licensees. But to truly get a feeling for the industry in 1995, let's head over to Tower Records, arguably the hippest, best-run, and deepest stock chain in the nation with 89 stores in 20 states. In fact, there were over 9,000 chain music retailers in America in 1995, including Sam Goody, Warehouse, Strawberries, HMV, and more. Within a decade, there will be less than 2,000. Just one year earlier, Tower had posted record profits of $17.3 million. And even though the chain becomes one of the very first music retailers online this year by launching the website Tower.com, Russ Solomon tells the Sacramento Bee that, quote, the Internet will never take the place of a real record store. Meanwhile, that July in Seattle, Jeff Bezos launches an online bookstore called Kadabra.com, which soon changes its name to Amazon. The website will soon add CDs, DVDs, and video games to its inventory, and Bezos readily admits that the company may financially be in the red for at least five years. Amazon will not turn a penny of profit for seven years. <laughs> 